Hey, what's up guys? My name is Moda and welcome back to the Mining Stacker YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be an update video to the S19K Pro. That's that new Bitcoin miner from Bitmain. It is fully out in the wild and we do have some pics of the internals, right? So we did learn quite a few things, saw quite a few differences. So we're going to talk about them so we can kind of compare and contrast to some of the other Bitcoin models so we can make better decisions if you're thinking about purchasing one, right? So if that sounds good, guys, stay tuned, all right? So let's get to it. So before we get started, did have a little update. Did finally put up a merch store. So if you guys are interested, there is a link. If you go on the YouTube channel, you can see in the link section, there is a direct link to the fourth wall store there. If you go also on the tab section, if you click on the store button, there is a link to the items there. It's just like t-shirts, hoodies, things of that sort. It's just a fun way to help support the channel for any guys who are interested, right? So it would be greatly appreciated. If you're interested, and if not, it's all good. It's all good in the hood. Um, so let's get to this thing, though. So if any of you guys remember, the S19K Pro was essentially like a budget XP model, right? So it's also that one model that got delayed for the longest. And you guys remember, this thing was actually announced back in like March, April. They did the whole thing. They even did that little guess the hash rate game. They did all that. They confirmed the specs, and then they just stopped talking about it, right? And then about a month ago, they finally brought it back with a full different set of specs. And it's officially out now, right? So it's not just announced, but it's out in the wild. People have these things and they are shipping, right? So now let's look at the updated specs. So this guy is coming in at 120 terahash, 2,760 watts. And the biggest difference is the efficiency, right? At least in comparison to some of the other models, this thing is more efficient. The one we want to compare to right off the bat is the S19J Pro Plus, which oddly enough also has a 120 terahash model. On mine, the ASIC, they have it listed at 122, but it is 120, which is pretty silly of Bitmain. You would think they would have pushed the new model to like 125, something slightly different just to really differentiate it, right? Or at least make it even more appealing. But when you look at Two models that just came out fairly recently that are both 120 terahash, one being cheaper, your eyes are going to go to that one, right? So really, kind of a weird take that they did it at 120. Um, the initial specs, though, right, if we go back to it, some of the stores still do have the old listing. It was listed at 136 terahash, 3,264 watts, right? So the big thing to know here is that it was very similar to the XP, right? At least in the terms of the overall hash. My kind of prediction was maybe that's something that had to do with it. Maybe it was affecting some of the XP sales and they wanted to reduce that, right? Because again, even at this rating, the 136 terahash, the efficiency was on par with what the current listing is at, right? So pretty interesting that they decided to clown clock, down clock it. Um, there is another potential reason and we'll talk about one of the differences we saw and this is actually probably the more likely reason, right? So we'll talk about that here in a second. But again, comparing it to the S19J Pro Plus, the main glaring difference is the efficiency, right? Again, the hash rate, there is that variant that is the same. The difference is the efficiency, right? So the J Pro Plus coming in at 27.5 joules of terahash in comparison to the 23 joules of terahash, right? So nearly a 20% gain in efficiency, right? So may not seem too crazy now, but come the halving, especially after the halving, efficiency is going to be the name of the game. At least for quite a while, at least until we get into that bullish momentum. But for a while, after the halving, it might be a little bit rough, right? So pretty good efficiency gain. Not as efficient as the XP, but it's very, very close. I mean, it's within 10%. The XP is coming in at 21.5 joules of terahash. And chances are, if they do eventually release a low power mode for this guy, it'll probably be right in that realm, right? So very interesting, um, especially for the price, right? So bang for the buck wise, it's looking pretty good, right? Um, so if we put it into a calculator again, it's making about a buck a day, which is typical for most of the new XP miners. It's break even or better at a 10 cent kilowatt hour. Which is really just what you want to see. Again, if you're into BTC mining and this is a venture you want to go through, it's kind of the name of the game, right? And that's pretty much going to be the strategy is to mine, hold, pay your electric out of pocket. Because if you're interested in getting one of these things and considering paying your electric out of what you're yielding, it's not going to work out, right? For a dollar a day profit, 
that's not going to be the strategy, right? The main strategy here, if you're on, again, if you're on a smaller scale, you're at home, pay your electric out of pocket and just hold for the bull market, right? That's pretty much the name of the game here, right? So dollar day profit, if we plug in the previous settings, it's pretty much the same profit wise, but what you got to factor in is that you're going to have more yield, right? So this will definitely be considering that the efficiency is pretty much on par. Eventually, once they do have like the Epic board gets compatibility with this guy, I'm sure you'll be able to clock it at bare minimum to this point. Hopefully, maybe even a little bit better, maybe at this hash rate, but slightly more efficient, right? It would make it a, definitely a much better deal. Um, currently, it's not compatible, but I'm sure it's something that they will work on, right? So now let's look at some of the differences we found out. And huge shout out to Altair Tech for giving us this information, right? They're an extremely good follow on Twitter. If you're into BTC mining hardware, they're one of the best, right? They're always some of the first to give us these cool updates, right? So again, it's at Altair underscore tech. They are one of the better Bitcoin mining suppliers, right? So if you're interested in ASICs, parts, supplies, they are one of the better ones. They also have one of the better prices, right? We'll go over the prices here after this. Um, so let's look at some of the differences, right? So they did get this guy in hand. So this is very relevant, good information. So one of the biggest differences are the amount of chips per board, right? So this one has 77 chips per hash board in comparison with the XP. The XP has 110 chips, right? So the drawback there is that it lowers your headway for overclocking, right? Ideally with overclocking, because this one has less chips, those less chips are clocked higher already. Right, so it gives you less headroom there versus with like the XP, for example, it's more chips that are clocked at a lower frequency, therefore giving you more overclocking opportunity, right? So something to factor in there. If that's something you're interested in doing, you will be slightly limited. But again, at bare minimum, you should be able to overclock it to what those previous settings were and hopefully a little bit more efficient as typically as we've seen with these aftermarket firmwares that typically they are able to, you know, eke out a little bit more efficiency. So this is another pretty cool difference. Pretty different, pretty unique. They did put two beefier fans on this guy. We can see here they are 4.5 amp. These are MarTech brand, right, which is different from some of the other models, which happens, right? Sometimes you get different model fans, even though it's the same connector, same uh, amperage, wattage, etc. The difference being here is the connection, right? So something very, very interesting here. You can see here on the control board, Typically, you have these four same headers. You can see here the big layering difference, right? Two of these fans, a much beefier connector, right? So something interesting to note there, and it's for those two bigger, beefier fans, right? So something interesting, something they've never done before because something that's not necessarily in their best interest because it's all easier for them to just continue to release that same control board and the same fans, right? So it's pretty interesting that they decided to do something different. Because realistically, it's going to cost more to produce, right? Because it is something different. Unless this is something that they plan to now do on every model going forward, which is possible also, I kind of slightly doubt. To me, what I was kind of like hinting to before, maybe they were having heating issues when it was at, at that 136 terahash clock. Maybe this was the initial fix. Maybe the thought process is, okay, we'll add in two beefier fans. And maybe that'll fix it. Maybe that was the thought process and maybe it still didn't work. And that's why they decided to underclock it to finally just resolve the issue just so they can ship them out. Possible, right? Um, but something pretty, just pretty interesting there, right? Because we rarely see any deviations in their overall design, right? Typically the shell's the same, control boards are the same. So it's pretty, something pretty interesting there. Um, the other thing to know are the heatsink style. It is the heatsink style of what we saw in the S19J Pro Plus, where it is the soldered on individual heatsinks, which so far haven't really seen any issues, right? So it's not necessarily a negative. Initially, there was concern there just because people got flashbacks from the S17, right? With these things falling off and having all the issues, but so far they seem to be fairly reliable. And the other big thing is that they are not going with those aluminum backed boards, right? They're back to the all green boards, which is a positive in my opinion, because again, if you just think about it, having a whole big aluminum sheet, what's going to happen? It's going to trap in that heat more, right? So if you're in a hot area, hot climate, 
it's not something you want to see, right? So it is kind of good that they went back to these style boards. So curious now to see what these next models come out like. Like, I'm really curious about the S19 JXP. Like, if they go to these style boards also, or if they use those boards that are in the XP. Who knows? We'll see. We'll keep our eye on. But we do know that with these... They do have these, and so far, comparing with the J Pro Pluses, they have been, seem to be good so far, right? So something good to note there. The other big discovery they made, and this is a big one, is the chip that it's using. So it looks like it is the BM1366, which is the XP chip, right? So super, super interesting, gives more credence to the budget XP options so now the question is are they just budget are they like b-grade xp chips or is that how they were able to get the price down by having less chips per board right so it's going to reduce the cost and they're just having those chips at a higher frequency to attain those hash rates right so far that's what it seems like it is but um something super interesting right pretty interesting to know it's something that we we're kind of interested in um just something good to know there the other tidbit of news that came out through here, shout out to Fully Electric for asking if it had a low power mode, and it currently does not, right? Although I'm sure that that will come out here shortly, right? And it's something that would be something very interesting because typically with these low power modes, on top of just having lower overall power, it usually does increase the hash rate by a good little bit, right? So chances are, if it does eventually have one, It'll probably bring us into the realm of the XP efficiency, right? So super, super interesting there. Now let's look at prices, right? So, so far things are looking pretty good there, but now we got to look at the price, right? Because that's really going to dictate everything else. And the street price when it debuted, or the MSRP, I should say, was 2500 bucks, right? So far, the best price actually from the bigger vendors is from Altair Tech. Again, if you're interested in purchasing, I do have an affiliate link in the description. I have purchased from them before. That's why I do have an affiliate thing with them just because I have used them and they seem to be really good guys. Quick shipping. Good, good guys there. But the price is $21.99 and it is the best price out of the bigger box stores, right? So now let's look at some of the prices from the other stores just so we can compare and confirm. Again, theirs is at $21.99. If we go on ASIC Marketplace, it's $22.79. Minor Bros has it at almost $2,400. And Hash at $2,249. Cool Dragon at about $2,300. And our BFFs over at Viperatech have it about $2,300 also, right? Um, so overall, very good price here. And overall, not just comparing to other stores, it is a pretty good price overall, right? If we compare it to the other more modern, more efficient BTC miners, again, it's about a 20% efficiency gain over the J Pro Plus with only about a 10% price difference, right? And then the other thing to factor in is that there's a 20% efficiency gain there, but there's only a 20, or about a 10% efficiency difference between this and the much more expensive XP model. And that's what makes it appealing, right? Because the efficiency is going to be the name of the game after the halving. Right, so if we look at the J Pro Plus, they currently, these guys also have some of the best prices on that model. And we can see here that the 120 terahash model is 2,000 bucks, right? So about a 10% difference in price. To me, the K is the more appealing model, right? Um, if the 117 terahash is 1899, so a little bit cheaper there, but again, overall, looking at that efficiency gain, that K is looking pretty good. Right, um, so just something to factor in there. Um, so overall, guys, pretty pretty interesting model, pretty good price, right? We did get a glimpse into the insides, XP chips, and again, that two thousand dollar price point. Will it go any lower? There is a little bit of headway, right? The main reason I'm saying that is just because if we look at Bitmain's price, right? Typically, from what we've seen. For the miners that do not sell out, the price after coupon tends to be closer to the street price, right? So if we base it off of that, the after coupon price is actually $17.64, right? So is it going to be cheaper to buy from Bitmain? If you're in the U.S., no, right? Reason being is that you're still going to get hit with those duties, right? So even though you're saving 30% with that coupon, you're going to get hit with the 30% duty anyway, 
right? But a lot of the stores who kind of get rid of the duty for you, typically this is closer to the price. So there may be a little bit of leeway going down, right? But again, because of how good of a bang for the buck this is, the price may not deviate a whole lot from here, right? Another thing to know with BTC mining is you got to do the risk versus reward as to how much farther down it may go if it goes down at all, right? this point, the big layering thing you really have to factor in is just the having coming up, right? If this is a venture you're thinking about going into, kind of the sooner the better, right? You need to mine as much as you can prior to the having because if we go by the cycle, chances are the majority of these at a residential rate will likely not be profitable and will probably be at a pretty significant loss, right? Majority of the hash rate is going to be controlled by all the guys with sub five cent power that the guy's gonna be controlling the network essentially, at least until we get some bullish price action, right? Which if we go by the cycle typically is until like September, October, could it happen sooner? Can it happen later? Sure, right? But these are the risk versus reward things you gotta consider if you're still thinking about getting into BTC mining. That's something you gotta factor in, right? I know we're kind of in this bearish mode and like, oh, maybe the price will go down more. Realistically, is it worth the risk of saving maybe a couple hundred bucks? Those are the things you got to factor in and you really, really got to think about, them, right? But if we compare it as a whole, not a bad bang for the buck here, right? Um, so let me know in the comments. Let me know, are you guys still thinking about getting a BTC miner or are you guys more like in my mindset where you're mainly sticking with the altcoins? Um, are you waiting? Are you hoping for a bigger price tip? What are you doing? Let me know in the comments, guys. Please comment, like, and subscribe, guys. Let me know. Please check out that merch store. Thank you for watching, guys. And I am out.